Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're downtown San Francisco, the Hotel Nico. It's International Women's Day, March 8th. There's stuff going on all around the world. But we're excited to be here at the Accenture event, about 400 people, a lot of great panels, some familiar faces, some new faces, and, and uh, one of those familiar faces joins us in the next segment. He's Mark Correll <laughs> from Accenture Labs. Mark, great to see you. Great to see you, too. And a new face, Mary Hamilton, Managing <laughs> Director, also from Accenture Labs. Mary, right. great to see you. Great to see you, too. So first things, just kind of impressions of this event. I don't know if you did it last year, we weren't here. You know, it's a lot of energy, kind of initial takeaways from some of the early panels. I mean, the energy is there. I mean, definitely last year we were here. I mean, we do that every year, for sure. And last year it was amazing as well. But I think this year is even bigger than we had last year. We have a kind of a hub and spoke type of organization where we have also our top leadership to go from different cities. And then we celebrate all over the world. So this year the hub is here. And that's the reason why there's so much buzz and so much excitement. Awesome. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, all of our leadership is here. And just phenomenal guests uh, from... You know, we really aim for diversity, even not just gender diversity, but diversity across all of our different panelists. You know, the kinds of things they're thinking about, the way they're thinking about diversity. Um, you know, and for me, just some of those takeaways. Um, you know, Vivian Ming. Uh, you know, her point was when she showed up. Um, and is there a difference between how men and women are treated when she showed up as herself, as she is today, as a woman? She said, she's never been asked a math question since. And that just blew me away, you know, that it's so black and white. And they're really, you know, from someone that's lived on both sides, there really is a difference. Right, right. Yeah. So one of the topics you guys are involved in labs is, is innovation, right? Right. Every, so there's digital transformation, yeah, 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 yeah. But really innovation is, is, is kind of a more concrete thing that people are trying to, oh, to achieve. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you guys are a big absolutely. part of that at labs. Diversity is a big part of being more innovative. So how, how do you guys see it in your customer base? And how do you see it within the work that you guys do within your own department at the labs group? Well, I'll start just, you know, if you think about innovation, innovation that taps diversity is stronger innovation, right? Our clients are delivering products and services to a diverse audience. And as we serve our clients and try to help them transform and be more digital, we have to reflect the, the consumers or the buyers for their products. And if we don't have that diversity, we're not going to deliver the right kinds of innovation. Right. I think Mary is absolutely right. And then um, what's very important to us is that, that we, we absolutely demonstrate that through numbers. So, you know, we have like seven labs. Uh, two of our leaders are women from those labs. We have five research domains. Out of the five research domains, three out of the five are led by women. Right. And I think that's pretty amazing. Now, you, you see that from an organization perspective. But I think if you look at who are the researchers, the most prolific that we have in our labs, from a few hundred people that we have, they're women. Hands down. And I'm going to give you some numbers, which is, again, amazing. We are kind of publishing about 2,000 clothes of patents, I mean, from, from the labs, I mean, okay. since we exist. More than 38% have been driven by women. And then our most prolific labber is a woman. She has delivered like 124 applications and patents. How got that? I mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> it do, it, what it drives is such an important piece, right? Which is one of my favorite quotes. In God we trust, but everybody else better bring data. Yeah. And, and right, so if yeah. you don't apply data, if you don't measure the data, and you don't actually put in processes to specifically address the problem, I agree. it's just conversation, yeah. right? It's I, just interesting words. I absolutely agree, Jeff. And I think Mary will be share with you, I mean, also we're putting a process, an approach, a culture that is really changing the mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We. I mean, we focus on programs. You know, not just at, at the junior level recruiting. We we do spend a lot of time and effort on getting out where women are. So you know, we do things like Grace Hopper. We invest a lot to go to Grace Hopper and yes. meet those technical women. We do things with women who code, with girls who code. To, you know, what's the pipeline going to look like? But then once we have them in, how do we retain them? And so we've created a community and a network um, where we do a number of things. We mentor them. We create uh, external networks, we create internal networks, we create kind of a social space, a safe social space where you can bring up questions like, what should I wear to International Women's Day without you know, having to feel awkward about asking those kind of things. We create a community that empowers and makes people feel comfortable. And, and, and do the clients get now that, that they, for whatever, good, bad, or otherwise, they just need more good people. Yeah. And you just can't not no, pull from the greatest population of good people that you can pull from. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely, you're absolutely right. And I think that's another aspect from what I see, uh, what's happening in the lab, and I think Mary is a great example of that. We're looking at role models, like amazing women like Mary that is going to be driving, basically, striving, and showing that our people that you can really have a 
a fantastic career path as a technology person in the lab and in the Accenture organization overall. Right. I think that's very, very important for us, I think. Yeah, and, and for me, I, you know, I'm not just a technologist, but I'm also a mother of three small kids, and I try to bring that to work, right? I try to show people, you know, I'm not just taking the, you know, hardcore path. You know, I'm balancing a family. I'm doing all these things that probably the rest of you are trying to do too, right. and I, I let it show, right? This is hard, you know, how can I help you? Here's what I'm going through. You know, here are the challenges I'm facing, and try to bring others along too. So funny, we did an interview years ago, actually at an IBM event, and, and there was a great woman who was from an HR kind of consultative background, and she said, you know, we spend all this time trying to find these great people that have all these great attributes, yeah. and then we bring them in, and then we just like give, give, them, give them the compliance yeah. manual. <laughs> now you need to not be you, the mom that's who's right, got stuff going, you. you just yeah. got to be this little machine. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really not the way anymore, no, not no, at no. all. Yeah. And, and credit to our leadership, to Mark, to Paul, Ellen, all the way up, right? It, there's a true support for being truly human, bringing yourself to the workplace, and they support it, they, they encourage it, right? And, and I think that that culturally seeps in to how we bring diversity to innovation too, right? It's bring your whole self to how you think about innovation. Uh, when we're hiring, I mean, I have a great example. I had a client come visit us, and he's been a strong supporter of us, um, you know, in, within his um, client space. And he came in, and we were talking about, you know, his work. And then I took him out to meet the team that was building the proof of concept for him, um, some tangential areas. And he met people from not just men and women, you know, diverse, but also different backgrounds, engineers, researchers, you know, business folks. He met people from all kinds of backgrounds around the world, and he was able to have conversations about sports science, uh, cricket, uh, you know, ex uh, extended reality, and bring all those conversations back. And at the end of his meeting, he said, I was just floored at how many engaged conversations I was able to have with different people and the diversity of your workforce. And it's right. not just male, female, right? You need that broad spectrum diversity to fuel innovation, right. fuel Absolutely. new ideas. Right. I so, think, go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was just going to say, so, you know, obviously it's a feel good, feel good day today and it's yeah. a feel good place right here, but what are some of the, the significant, or is it just execution or are there still some big hurdles that we have to overcome? Especially, Mary, from your perspective, Mark's got it all figured out, so we don't need to worry about him. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there, there absolutely are, right? There's, there is a pipeline problem. Uh, there is a pipeline problem both from girls in STEM coming up, right? What culturally we're, we're telling girls. Um, and then there's a pipeline problem for, you know, we need to hire today. Um, and that's, I'm actually on the board of Women Who Code because I'm so passionate about their mission is let's get women to understand that technology is approachable, that it is for all of us, right, right? right? There's so many, the spectrum of what you can do with technology is so broad, and it's so, really, if you think about it, it's so appealing to so many women if you hit the right uh, you know, focus for them that I think we can bring more women into tech even now, right? We don't have to wait for the pipe, we have to work on the pipeline, but we don't have to wait for it. Right. We can start now. It's it's great, I mean, we, we do stuff with Girls in Tech and Girls Who Code, yeah. and obviously you're a Grace Hopper too. So you saw, I, I'm spacing on her name, the gal that gave the keynote from uh, from the UK, who yeah. was basically, you know, at her last nickel with her kids, yeah. divorced, homeless, yep. and she yep. learned how to code. And I don't know how yep. old she was, but she wasn't. And we uh, have so chicken. many, we have so many of those stories at Women Who Code. It turns their life around. And I mean, yeah. maybe the tech for good. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I mean, like also area. the nature of some of the project we're doing also are driving um, um, women. I mean, basically to be involved in this in this project. You know, the tech for good. I think I discussed that with you, I mean, yes. through some of those interviews, where we're using technology innovation to really change the world and the society and everything. We really believe, and, and we're not the only one to believe that. Um, you know, I mean, there's like other CEOs from other organizations that believe that like women are really attracted to build solutions or projects, or to be involved in projects that really have a purpose, right. that are meaningful for the society. And so the Tech for Good that we have launched, first of all, got an incredible success, not only within the firm, but outside of the firm. And the second thing is that he attracted tons of women talents. They love these kind of things. And then because they love that, they want to stick with Accenture and they'll, they, they, they continue striving. Yeah, I mean, you get both sides of the coin. You're doing things that are empowering women in many cases, right, right, you know, right. a lot of the projects we're doing. And then that's also attracting women because you know we're excited about betterment of society and humanity and yeah, it's interesting, yeah. How, you know, I, I got to give a lot of credit to kind of the younger generation coming up in terms of the, 
the, the prioritization of purpose yeah. within their hierarchy and deciding what to do, what companies to work yeah. for, oh, yeah. how to spend their time, you know, it's very different than when we were coming, we didn't think about purpose, trying to get a good job, right? And yeah. Pay off the mortgage <laughs> and, and get a car. They don't want a car, they don't want a mortgage, they just want to do good <laughs> no, things. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something, Jeff, I mean, it's just like the tech for good, I was just discussing with Mike Sutcliffe just before that, our uh, uh, chief officer for digital. And I was telling him that the tech for good, the reason why we decided to do the tech for good in the lab and talking to uh, my leaders and everything is just like, because my kids came to me and says like, hey dad, you have the best job in the firm now. I mean, you need to do something with it. And so obviously we it. had to do some tech for good things. That's I, it. I love it. Yeah. All right, we're running out of time. So I'll give you the last word. If, when we come back a year from now, I'll, I'll probably see you in a month since I see <laughs> you all the time. But a year from now at International Women's Day, what are you working on? What are your priorities? How does this integrate into what you guys are doing at Labs in your yeah. new, in your brand new space, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, part of part of the mission in that brand new space is to create these accidental collisions, right? And I think that accidental is accidental collisions. Uh, collaborative collisions. Oh, collaborative I should collisions. say. Accidental, accidental collaborative. I'm collaborative like, collisions. I love that term. <laughs> yes, we're not just colliding with each other. We're we're collaborating That's in right. these collisions. When atoms collide. Uh, things, yeah, big yeah. things happen, right? Um, I'm exactly. sorry, I knocked you train at the No, 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 that's <laughs> perfect. Um, and, and I think that whole mission is about how do we create that diversity of thought? How do we bring people together that wouldn't have collaborated in the past? And so, you know, my mission is we're moving, moving into that new space is to get my labbers who are, you know, we're on our own little floor doing our own little thing to expand our horizons, right? To think about diversity, you know, across the spectrum, how are we going to work with other groups? How are we going to bring different pieces to the innovation? So I hope we can reflect that even as we come back next year to this program. Great, all right. And my job is really to, I mean, as a, to pile on what Mary says, like, I'm going to continue stretching particularly the boundaries of our research, because I think that there's yeah. nothing better than to do like hard research, to solve a hard problem, to elevate our people. Right. And to be honest, whether it's women or men, they're all labors, they're all part of our family, and there's no better, uh, basically, reward for you to see these people basically shining and explaining their passion for our clients, changing society and everything. That's what we're going to do. Love the passion, Mark. Mary, it's always great to catch up. It's great to see you.